G'day Legends, Blake here with another video and today I'm going to give you a full updated fish room tour. It's been quite a few months since my last one so there's heaps to update. We've got 48 tanks to run through, let's jump straight into it. So the first tank off the ranks is my eight foot aquarium. It's an eight by two by two aquarium with a five foot sump. So the total water volume for this one is about 250 gallons or a thousand liters. And I've scaped it out with just some huge hollow logs, which provide some great caves for the fish to go and hide in. In terms of the fish, uh, we've got an interesting mix in here. The, the kind of show, showpiece fish in here are my pair of snakehead gudgeons, a beautiful big Aussie native. And they share this aquarium with some Peruvian Ultim angelfish, some Goita River rainbows, some mascara barbs, a bunch of clown loaches. Uh, we've also got some denison barbs in there. A whole heap of just random things that are fairly peaceful, but a bit bigger because I wanted to make use of the uh, water volume in this tank. And overall, it's just a nice fun tank to sit behind and just watch the fish go back and forth. Uh, I've got just some easy plants in here, needle leaf java ferns, Amazon swords and all that sort of stuff. And it's just because I didn't want to have to get in there and get my elbows wet every few days having to rescape as these larger fish sort of move things around. So that's the eight foot aquarium. Next up, I've got three uh, really functional aquariums that contain shrimp and a pleco. So, in the first one, I have uh, albino bristlenose and some red cherry shrimp. In the second one, I have yellow cherry shrimp and some common bristlenose. And in the third one, I have blue cherry shrimp and uh, some long fin albino bristlenose as well as some super red bristlenose. And that's because I want to, in the long term, breed my own uh, long fin super red bristlenose. So it's just kind of a fun project that I decided to pick up one day. And you know, I, I don't put a whole heap of pressure on it or anything like that. It's just one that in a few years time, I'll just be able to sit back and say that that was, that was a fun little project. So um, overall, these guys here just help me pay the bills to be honest, but I do enjoy the fish for what they are as well, which I think is important. Down below them, I have a four by two by two aquarium and that holds about 18, I think, or 20 discus. A uh, mixture of all different sort of patterns and colors just because I, I, I enjoy the variety in discus. I didn't want to just pick one and go with that, although that can be a pretty cool look as well. But for now, uh, I've got those in with some Gernther Ice sword tails. A uh, pretty wild type looking sword tail, but um, yeah, I just, I just put them in there as a bit of a dither fish to help the discus uh, sort of be brave and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, that's just a pretty cool pairing as well, I think, and enjoy that tank too. Although I do wish it was up further towards eye level so that I would actually look into it a bit more. Next one along, I've got some beautiful long fin white cloud mountain minnows. And I've never seen vibrant uh, finnage like these in person before. So I don't, in Australia, it's a bit bleak that the long fin white cloud mountain minnow population, but I'm pretty happy with these. The three males, there's three dominant males in here. They can be a little bit uh, aggressive when it comes time to, to get a bit frisky, but uh, for the most part, just enjoyable. And down at the bottom of that aquarium, uh, there's some gold laser quarries as well. Again, just a slightly unique one, but still shouldn't be too hard to breed uh, being part of that Aenus family, the bronze quarry family. So uh, hopefully I can get those going and I think that'll be another enjoyable tank. That's pretty set and forget. Below them is another species that I came across uh, during my Sydney trip and I thought it was really quirky and I had to keep them. And that is about half a dozen hoplo catfish. The bubble nesting uh, catfish gets a little bit on the larger side, sort of up to that five, six inch mark. And um, yeah, really beautiful patterns, I think. Great one. 
I try to put the larger fish down on the bottom of the rack just so it's easier to see. So that's pretty much why they've ended up where they have. But um, yeah, hopefully just kind of another long-term breeding project. <laughs> I collect those a little bit. Uh, next up, I'll, I'll group together the next uh, eight aquariums in two groups of four. So these are my uh, breeding aquariums for Emerald Rasboras and Celestial Pearl Danios. The four on the left are Emeralds and the four on the right are CPDs. And these are all bred using my 3D printed uh, egg collector, which I've been developing over five or six years now, refining things down. And I think I've got it to a really good spot now. Uh, I sell them on Etsy and I think I've got over 500 five-star reviews or something like that. So they obviously work for other people as well, which is good to see. But um, really simple process. I print the box and connect it up to a bit of um, poly pipe. That hooks into a hang-on breeder box that you can buy. You know, there's a number of brands that, that um, have them. And then they'll breed in some moss. I'll turn the air on for about 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night, and the eggs just come out so easily, just like having fry on tap. And it's just magical to watch. And I already loved these two species probably more than any other species that I've ever kept. So it's just so rewarding to have an easy way to replicate more of them and, and grow them and make them more available in the hobby. So if you do want to pick up any of these boxes, uh, the link to the Etsy is in the description. And also uh, you'll notice in other tanks, I've got a larger size breeder box and I've got a, uh, these ones here that offset to the left for smaller tanks. So both of those are new to the Etsy. So they'll be on there at the release of this video. So that's really exciting. But overall, a couple of beautiful species that I absolutely love. Down below them, I've got a tank that is the responsibility of my sons, my um, seven and six year old. They each picked out an axolotl and they, they look after this one, that's their pets. Um, to keep it cool, because I do heat the fish room itself, I do have some uh, Dymax fans that constantly um, blow across the top of the water surface. However, this does create a lot of evaporation, so be mindful if that is something you want to achieve. But uh, being on the bottom of the fish room and with that evaporative cooling, the tank stays pretty cool around 21 degrees Celsius, which is nice. And they are a quirky looking fish as well. So um, yeah, pretty cool to have some axolotls there. Actually, I don't even know if they're technically a fish, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. Uh, I have a few shrimp tanks at the top of the rack as well. Five of those uh, with the shrimp being uh, blue dreams. I've got some ye more yellows and more reds just kind of as backup colonies. I've got some orange eye blue tiger shrimp as well and just some mishlings like a mi mishmash of caradina shrimp. So they there's some snow whites in there. I think a couple of red wines and some blue bolts and kind of just threw them all in together and um, yeah they're, they're basically mishlings which uh, can be anything. So that's the first rack and we'll get started next on the bench. On the bench, I have the first tank there has some blueberry tetras in it. Again, this is that larger breeder box here, which hasn't had a lot of success yet, uh, just with this species, but I have had success of this box with other, six, uh, other species, but it's just another species that I stumbled across uh, in Sydney and, and I had to get them. So blueberry tetras, I think they're a bit bit uh, larger of a species of tetra which I like and they've just got some a really nice color to them so I uh, enjoy these species here so obviously trying to replicate more of them. Pretty simple tank setup because I just want them to focus in on the breeding to be honest. Next tank across I have uh, this one here has some CO2 injection, a uh, couple of easy plants and things like that but I just wanted it nice and densely planted for my ember tetras and other little species that I'm trying to breed. Um, but they do breed really easily just in a densely planted aquarium I've found in the past. So you just kind of let them have enough plants so that they won't find every single egg and eventually something will breed in there. So uh, a fry will survive in there and um, that's pretty cool. So that's the aim of the game there. I wanted to have another 
kind of tank to show off um, my plant keeping and have some more species of plants in here because it did become a bit of a moss only zone in here. So um, yeah, that, that's the intention behind that aquarium. Next to them, I have a species of uh, Aspidorus spilotus. This one is really cool. I just recently did a video. I'll put a card up above now if you're interested in that uh, of how to breed them, but these are great. A great species, a great Corydoras alternative, and they colony breed, don't eat their eggs, and it's just, just so, uh, just so rewarding to be honest. You don't really have to do anything at all, and they'll do everything and and make more of themselves, which is just great. Next to them, I have another two foot aquarium. This one has fourteen pea puffers in it. Again, another species that isn't overly common in Australia, but one of my absolute favourites. And uh, I've tried pea puffers in a different, couple of different combinations in pairs and in quads, uh, but now I'm just trying them in a, in a larger group to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, overall, real quirky little one, and I feed this tank a lot of freshly hatched baby brine shrimp. Down below them, I have a whole bunch of endless for the most part uh, and other live bearers. To get started though, well, I guess to buck that trend, um, I have some desert gobies in the first cream. So this one is a brackish tank with a little bit of salt in there. Uh, the desert gobies I got recently off a club member at the Aquarium Society of Victoria. So I uh, do recommend being a part of uh, clubs and societies to share your hobby with if, if that's what you're after. And um, it opens up doors to get, you know, basically new <laughs> new species for nothing. You can do swaps and all that sort of stuff. So that's how I ended up with some desert gobies. And ah, oh, there's there's quite a few in there. I think 20 plus quirky little fish. And uh, the guy that gave them to me just basically said that they're they're basically like rabbits. So I'm expecting there'll be more in there any day now. Next to them, I've just got uh, some blonde red line endlers. So um, basically the next seven tanks have all have endlers in it of varying types. Japanese blues, red lines, I've got a wild type, I've got uh, some tiger endlers, and oh, I've got a, a guppies that were sent to me from a viewer of the channel who bred a, a bit of a color variety that he liked and showed me and I said they are actually are pretty good I wouldn't mind keeping some of those as well and he sent them over so don't know exactly what to call those but um, sort of an apricot peachy sort of color. Within two of those aquariums in one of them I have some pygmy quarries again beautiful little catfish very very adorable very cute and one that doesn't eat the eggs as well so I kind of tend to uh, go towards the fish that can colony breed, especially at the moment when I'm just busy sort of having a family and doing all the hobbies and everything that that involves. And then in with the tiger endlers at the bottom, I have another species of Aspidorus, the Aspidorus albatare. Uh, I think that's what they're called. Really, really cool. Nice bold patterning, especially compared to the Aspidorus spilotus, but you know, an, another kind of quirky one that I'm happy to happy to keep here in the fish room. So that's the fish room bench and uh, the tank next to that I have a, a 60 centimeter by 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter or a two foot by 18 inch by 18 inch. That tank has a couple of massive Amazon swords in it, uh, some uh, some ruby barbs and some stir by Corys. So uh, again, just a beautiful little tank. Oh, and there's uh, one large uh, blue sapphire angelfish in there is kind of the showpiece of that tank. Um, really enjoyable one, pretty self-sustaining uh, again. And uh, yeah, just, just another good one to sit back and watch occasionally. And then moving around to the last uh, rack here, I've got uh, a bunch of smaller aquariums to just start off with. I have some dwarf spotted danios in the first one, uh, sort of, as you can probably see a theme now, I'm looking, I'm always looking for new species that I can try these breeder boxes with uh, just because it's, you know, really fun for me to, to do that. Uh, so this is another one that I've brought in to give a, give a go at that. Next to them I have some Kubitai Rasboros in with the larger breeder box and that is working 
really well. That was a tip actually I have to credit uh, Eric Bodrock and Regina Spotty. They came and visited my fish room recently and uh, suggested that the cubitize actually spray their eggs, you know, a bit, a bit wider and a bit more aggressively than the CPDs. So maybe I needed to try something a bit bigger. So that's where this has come into play and it's worked brilliantly as well as doing RODI water changes and putting some leaf litter. Actually, a lot of the tanks these days have leaf litter in them, just kind of a theme that I've started to introduce. Uh, but yeah, harvesting the cubitas um, every day as well. So that's pretty, pretty good. And then next to them, I have some chili rasboras, absolute favorite. You know, if you've seen well-conditioned chili rasboras in person, You'd be hard pressed not to love them. They just show the most vibrant coloration ever, especially after some freshly hatched baby brine. I uh, really, really enjoy this species. I do wish they were a lot easier to breed, but a lot of people, including myself, seem to really struggle with them. Next to them, I have some L number plecos. Oh, I, I'm really bad with L number plecos, though, to be honest. And it's in the notes somewhere, but I just can't remember exactly what they were. Uh, as well as that, I've just got some grow out of a couple of mystery little fry that I found. So I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm sure in time we'll find out. Next to them, I have some orange fin danios and a better, uh, just a HMPK better, uh, marble better that I thought had some really nice coloration. And the orange fin danios, they're all males, so there's not much going on in there. Uh, and next to them, I have my uh, five stripe bud, five banded barbs. Again, trying them just with the larger breeder box. Not much luck yet, but um, yeah, we'll keep working at it. I'll play around with some parameters and hopefully we do have some luck there. Next one across, uh, what have we got in there? We got, oh, this is a grow out tank just for baby CPDs. Nothing really that interesting about that. Uh, and then next to them, I have some transvestitis which are a beautiful little cichlid really really shy uh, quite aggressive actually they're very darty and they do jump out very dark coloration as well so kind of hard to find but uh, you'll see on the glass there actually I have a kind of I got asked to design a better log that would stick to the glass um, I've been playing with it I've put it in here and the transvestitis actually really enjoy going in and exploring inside there and it's quite good to have the window so that I can actually see when they're in a cave because so often you put caves in and you have to sort of shine a torch in there or yeah basically just resign yourself to never seeing the fish so um, this is another one that is new to the Etsy site and should be up at the release of this one but it'll be in limited numbers because I've only bought 20 suction cups or something like that just to give it a go so um, yeah, if you're interested in that for your betters or other fish, um, yeah, that could be an option for you. Next tank across, I've got a couple of peacock gudgeons, just a pair and um, yeah, one again, just kind of a fun breeding project, something different. Uh, really interesting colors, I reckon, and, and I like gudgeons as well. I just think they're an interesting shape and, and all that sort of stuff. Having bred uh, purple spot gudgeons in the past, um, fire tail gudgeons and empire gudgeons so yeah just another one to try out really next species to them i've got uh, really excites me i got some burmese rummy nose now these guys came in really really rough and i've been nursing them back to health uh feeding heaps of black baby ryan and, and some high quality pellets and things like that uh, but now that they are sort of a bit more stable they're showing off really really well and uh, yeah, just just a, a species I've been looking to get for quite a while and um, play with. So happy to have, I think I've got about eight or 10 Burmese Raminos in there. Tank down below them, I have my Tanganyikin set up. I cannot part with my Tanganyikin, even though these days mainly I have these sort of small community fish, plant friendly things and all that. But I guess this one's just the point of difference. I have some shell dwellers in the bottoms, Neolampologus multifasciatus. In the middle, I have my Gelidochromus transcriptus, a rock dweller. And then kind of in the background, because they're very dark and they blend in with the black background, I have some red Molyro trophius. All three of these species are breeding in here. 
all three of them are getting quite getting along, which I wasn't sure. I was actually prepared to take the trophies out if any drama sort of kicked off, but uh, overall it's been just an easy process and the three work in tandem really, really well together. So really happy with this combo and um, yeah, very, very cruisy tank. One to sit back and watch. And then the next tank along I have a four foot aquarium. This one has some uh, Sanke sword tails or uh, what else were they calling them? The tricolor sword tails. And below them I have some black Venezuelan quarries. Again, I just love the catfish and life bearer combo. I have sort of my plants overflow in here as well, just to sort of keep them because I can't, can't go without them and all that sort of stuff, but I don't really know what else to do with them. But again, just a really cruisy tank, um, set and forget. And you know, it's always fun to see new baby sword towers being made and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the Black Venezuelans is quite a big colony because I had bred them in another tank species only before, but uh, just moving on to working with other species. So I thought, you know, they can live out their days down there with the sword towers and they'll all have a good time and get along. So why not? So there we go. That is my current fish room. Uh, I'm just really busy at the moment, honestly, with being a father of three, uh, full-time worker and having a whole bunch of other hobbies and sports to get into. So a lot of the fish room, to be honest, is in that sort of take care of itself mode, but that's kind of good too. It's a bit stress-free. It uh, frees me up to have a think about video ideas and things like that. And if there is anything you actually want me to make a video on, feel free to drop it down below. I'm more than happy to take suggestions, but other than that, hopefully there's a good mix of common stuff and maybe a bit of a unique stuff. Hopefully I gave you some good ideas or just you know, fought the boredom away for a minute. And if it did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.